and we are good to go. All right, thanks, Bob. Uh, welcome to the Amherst Design Review Board meeting of March 18th, 2024. My name is Erica Zekas, and as the chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, I'm calling this meeting to order at 5.01 p.m. The meeting is being recorded and, I will, and will be made available via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. <clears throat> Minutes are being taken. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing will be posted on the town's online calendar. Board members, I will take a roll call, and when I call your name, uh, let me know that you're here. Um, Lindsay Schnarr? Here. Uh, Karen Winter? Here. Pat Off is not here tonight. Catherine Porter? Here. And I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that this is Catherine's last meeting as a DRB member. Um, she is cycling off the committee, and I just want to make sure that we don't forget in the flurry of things on the agenda this evening to thank Catherine so much for her service. Catherine, you've been a member since 2016, is that right? I have no idea. It's all a blur. It's a <laughs> but hopefully we, it's not a good one. <laughs> at that time, um, we scrunched into that little room off of the town room. Uh, upstairs uh, and met there, you know, for, I guess, a couple of years before we branched out. But uh, yeah, it's been well, great. Thank you for thank always being you. here and for being so invested in the town and your participation has been fantastic and much very welcome. Um, and Eric Zikos, I'm here. Uh, Karen Blum will be our new DRB member as of April 1st. Okay, um, okay back to the long read. Uh, board members, if technical issues arise, we may need to pause temporarily to fix the problem and then continue the meeting. If the discussion needs to pause, it will be noted in the minutes. Please use the raised hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I will see your request and I will call on you to speak. After speaking, remember to re-mute yourself. The general public comment item is reserved for public comment regarding items that are not on tonight's agenda. Please be aware the board will not respond to comment during the general public comment period. Public comment could also be heard at other times during the meeting when determined appropriate. Please indicate that you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button when public comment is solicited. If you've joined the Zoom meeting using a phone, please indicate that you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair. If a speaker does not comply with the guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be discontinued from the meeting. Tonight's agenda includes the following. Item one, general public comment period. Uh, and item two, uh, our applications this evening, we've got uh, DRB FY 2024-16, Town of Amherst, to discuss the North Common site furnishings and lighting. Uh, number 17, Trustees of Amherst College, new signage at 45 South Pleasant Street. Um, and then we have, we'll have approval of February meeting minutes and uh, our other our other business, and that tonight will include a continued discussion of the design review board standards revisions. So we will um, head into general public comment period. Is there anybody in attendance who wish to speak tonight? Not seeing anybody raising their hand, Erica. Um, okay. And if you're on the phone. If you wish to speak, you can press star nine. Still no. Okay. If we notice that the number of participants increases uh, along the way, maybe we can uh, revisit public comment period uh, between, between uh, applications tonight. 
So why don't we move on then to town of Amherst? Who is presenting? Is that Nate? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Nate Malloy, a planner with the town. I'll share my screen and I, if I'm allowed. Sure. And we can walk through the plans. Okay. And I just, I should take a moment before you, before you head into your review, Nate, just to remind the uh, DRB members, we're, we're talking tonight, not so much about the design of the park, but of the um, a handful of some smaller pieces, the, the furnishings, benches, tables and chairs, trash receptacles, and um, amenities like interpretive signage, uh, walkway and street lighting and, and bollards. Um, so Nate, go ahead, sorry to interrupt you. No, sorry, yeah, this has been a uh, multi-year project. And so it's under construction now if you, if you go through the center of town. And so, um, yeah, I'll just walk through some of the materials, the, uh, Oh, let me see if I can make this a little smaller. Yeah, here we go. So there's um, there was a material list provided. So there was a lot happening mostly on the ground plane. So you know, sidewalks, walkways. There'll be different treatments in different areas. So everything that's in yellow here in front of town hall, uh, the perimeter walks along the um, common will be concrete. Uh, there's a, a new granite retaining wall outside of town hall here to make a bigger a bigger area. The plaza outside of town hall, this is gonna be a raised area right here. Um, and so it'll be open to traffic. And then at times if we need to, this area can be closed down and this becomes a bigger plaza area. This, this area right here uh, will have the thermoplast treatment. So it'll be um, asphalt then with a you know the treatment that we've been using on crosswalks and in the center of the roundabouts UMass recently used it as well for their crosswalks so that's a surface treatment uh, I'll just keep going with the kind of surface and um, curbing uh, the walls along here along the common the sitting walls here any curbing along the walkways will be granite so some of it will be pretty um, Minimal and some will be exposed, say, uh, like on Spring Street next to the church. So uh, these granite sitting walls and the walls here are thicker and wider, and they might have, you know, an exposed space of, you know, 12 to 18 inches, whereas the curbing will be thinner and might not have as much um, be as tall. The interior walkways are asphalt. Uh, they're not concrete, they're asphalt. And then these crescent sitting areas with um, with benches will be concrete pavers. And so, uh, you know, these, the central sitting area and then these other two sitting areas will have concrete pavers. And so those are the uh, ground plane materials. I guess I will say that the town's proposing down here, a Goshen stone walkway, kind of an informal walk here. Uh, someone could still manage to come up here and then come around the plaza, uh, and so the, the thinking might be there might be a desire line. It's not, you know, essentially an, an accessible walkway. They have to step over a curb, but there will be some stones here uh, and a granite block as a bench for people to be able to walk across uh, these two paths, hopefully without, you know, creating a, a dirt path. Um, there is a kind of a desire line there. The, the furnishings and amenities are really similar to what we've used at Kendrick Park and at Groff Park. Uh, and what we've used around the roundabout for lighting. So um, the benches will be similar to, we just go here. Um, I guess I should ask if there's any questions about the materials, about the granite, the stone and the pavers uh, now. We can, if that's okay, then we could go down through the rest. Yeah, I see, keep going, Nate. Okay, so for furnishings, we have uh, the benches, tables and chairs and trash receptacles. And those would be similar to at Kendrick. Uh, they're metal benches uh, with some, you know, some ornamentation. Uh, so, you know, here's the style of bench. You know, I guess we could decide on a color. You know, we, you know, the, the, I, could, I could pull up the manufacturer's webpage. There's a number of colors. Um, you know, for the tables and chairs right now, we're looking at having a, a set where there's a you know a smaller table and four chairs that are attached. This may or may not be the style we choose. Uh, Emmy O'Brien is a a, um, a company that 
helps work with companies, represents a number of companies, and they think they can get this bench um, to be in a chair and they would have a simple uh, two foot by two foot square table. So the tables and chairs could match. Otherwise, uh, do more is the company, the vendor we might use, and they don't have an exact match for the style bench. So this is something that, you know, a similar uh, trash receptacle here. It's both trash and recycling. It could be a split um, receptacle. And then I guess for lighting, um, there's two types of lighting. There's street lighting on the perimeter, and then there's walkway lighting. And the street light will mimic the newer lights by the roundabout. Uh, near uh, the north side of Kendrick Park where they have the skirts. Uh, so they're not the um, cobra heads, uh, you know, the ones that have been replaced in other parts of town. And then the interior walkway lighting, I guess what we could um, look at would be, um, there's the traditional acorn light here and these can have interior shields. So they're downcast. So these are also at Kendrick Park. The bases would be similar. So similar. excuse me, Nate. I don't yeah. think you're showing us what you're talking about. Oh no. I, I thought I was sharing my screen. Maybe I was sharing a Yeah, we're still seeing the trash receptacle. So thanks for pointing that out, Chris. <laughs> I, is this now visible? You're good. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. So the, the bases and all would be the same. A decorative base with a top. And so uh, in Kendrick Park, there's two light fixtures. Typically, we've been using this uh, this acorn light with the interior glazing, so it has a full shield. Uh, and so this is what's there now. The there had been a kind of a uh, here's another example of it, kind of a test to use an integrated LED fixture uh, that is would be on the same post, and here it is from afar, and it's a different style head uh, post top fixture as they call it. And so here's more of a detail of it. And so there's no glazing or anything. This is all open with the, the LED mounted underneath, you know, and there's a finial here. Um, you know, I will say that staff finds that it's not as, you know, the proportions aren't as nice with the pole. And so we wouldn't change the poles. It's just the kind of this post top fixture is what you know, something that could be considered. Um, and then for street lights, it was what was in the packet. Uh, interpretive signs would mimic the writer's walk sign. So it'd be a simple, uh, simple low sign. We'd have probably have two, could be three in the park. One would be for the fountain. One would also be describing the removal of the parking lot and heat island effect and on-site stormwater management. So that's something that's part of the grant uh, the town has for this project. And I think that's probably it for now. You told us what might be the contents of the interpretive signs, but do you have any images about how they might, how you might describe what they look like? Sure, let me do another share. I don't believe that was in our packet. It wasn't, I um did not receive, oh, there it is. Actually, okay. I think Erica, it's in the, uh, I think that document's called Town, Town Common Furnishings, and that's like one of the last pages, like page oh, three. Okay. Yeah, so this is this is the writer's walk <laughs> sign. So it's a, I don't want to say it's an 11 by 17 panel. It's a little bigger, and then uh, it's affixed to a back, and it's on a simple square post that has a footing. Uh, so that, you know, there that would be, it would be similar to this in style. All right. And then I think for street lights, if I scroll down, it'd be these street lights right here that we, you know, there's one, this is existing and it'd be new, so a few proposed around the perimeter. Yeah. Okay. So comments or questions for Nate regarding the materials lighting, furnishings, or signage. Uh, Karen, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> the bench and the chairs, I like them very much, but I know that a family that sits around with three kids and 
having four chairs is kind of limiting. You can't put something else there. Uh, I'm wondering if it's possible to look at, or have you thought of just those circular benches where any number of, of people with their children could sit? Hmm. So yeah, I think in the Crescent sitting areas, you know, we'd have you know two benches and there's, there's always sitting walls in the central area. And it's something we could discuss is, you know, the town's also discussed, could we have, you know, movable chairs kind of like what's in Boltwood Plaza now. So it's not a fixed number per table. And that's something we, you know, we asked Emmy O'Brien to look into. So right now what they're looking into is having chairs and tables and not have them be one, you know, one uh, kind of unit, they would be separate, but you could have, you know, roughly four chairs per table and they could be moved. Great. And the, and the other question I had is, I'm, I'm sure the asphalt is that always because uh, anything else is cost prohibited because asphalt, you know, it looks fine for a while, but then it gets to look so shabby after a while. Um, and I wonder if there's any alternative. I mean, little little cobblestone, I don't know. Have, has that ever crossed uh, your mind in conversations to have something besides asphalt for those long walks? Yeah, I think there was a you know cost factor there. Concrete is more expensive. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, it is a maintenance issue to, um, you know, concrete could be maintained. It has to be an accessible walkway. So, you know, if it were, you know, if it was like oil and stone, that would become more of a maintenance, um, you know, an, you know, an annual or more than annual maintenance uh, routine than asphalt. So, yeah, I think it was, you know, considered it just, it wasn't um, included in the final design. Um, and I think Catherine's hand. Yeah, right. Um, thinking about what Lauren had uh, mentioned about having smaller tables, I think some of that could be accommodated down at the other part, the other part of the common where there are picnic benches now that do hold more people. So maybe that would be uh, a compromise. But I wanted to get back to the the chairs that you showed, the chair and table and the bench. Uh, I really would like to advocate for them to be more uh, similar in style. Uh, I think that makes a more, uh, I don't know, pleasing appearance rather than a, because the bench you showed to me had no in no way related to the tables. So uh seems like that's probably going to be something that you can uh accommodate. Then the other thing is about the lighting. How many different lights and lamps are we going to have in that one area? And and uh you have the ones that are in the middle. Are they similar to the downtown lights? Uh, it looks like we've got like two or three different styles of lighting in a very small area. I don't see. Uh, so I'm just asking that question. I'd like to see more compatibility with all the lights in Amherst that we tend to come up with. Sure. Mark. Yeah. So I think the, the street lights downtown would be the last ones I showed with like the skirt, you know, right. um, so that, you know, it was, was around uh, there near the roundabout. So that would be, become the street light uh, in Amherst, downtown, not the Cobra style. Um, and then in terms of the walkway lighting, staff's preference is the, the first one I showed with the, the, gla the glass with the interior shield. Yeah, I think that would be something we want the DRB to recommend or talk about. The other one, the black one with the integrated LED, that was the open fixture. I think Public Works had put that on there as like a trial to see, you know, if that would be a, a newer fixture that could be used, um, you know, the the all glass one can be LED. The new the newer phase ones, kind of phase three, are LED, and they can be twenty seven hundred K too, so they're not too uh, blue in color. And so, you know, knowing that, we would propose to use kind of you know, so all the lights in downtown, a lot of the walkway lights are using the the acorn light 
they might not have the interior shield, but as they would get replaced, if this becomes kind of the new style, that it would stay that. It wouldn't be the the other one. What is the shield doing? Is that casting the light downward? Because I, I noticed that that one didn't have a, a, a cap, a solid. Yeah, so here, and this, is this uh, visible? The, yeah. the picture? That's the open one. Yeah, this is the open one. And so, you know, the, the integrated LED is right under here, so it really just shines down. Yeah. And um, in this fixture, it's hard to see, but the the full shield, you know, is from where the cursor is above. So all this is painted or has a shield on the inside, so that the light will still shine down. It can't it can't go up. Good. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's, it won't be visible. The shield isn't necessarily visible from the exterior. It's just applied on the inside. Did, and do the two with the with the glazing and without have similar lighting levels? And light quality for the pedestrian? Yeah, I, you know, um, Guilford hadn't indicated that there was any any difference. I guess some people have said that the ones with all glass can sometimes have a glare the way the light might come through the glazing as opposed to if it were, you know, the other one. But um, I know that there's been some opinions on either either side of the, for either fixture. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard that it doesn't, the illumination is, is much dimmed. It's really then dark sky compliant. So it's, there's yeah. no uplighting. Lindsay, do you have any thoughts on the, on the, on the lighting fixtures? Or other for that matter? Um, I mean, I know this is a hot topic of, you know, ours in terms of trying to create as much consistency as possible. Um, I don't have a solution. I, I think it's great to hear that there's a, there's an intention to try to, you know, create consistency going forward. Um, it would be nice if they were warm in temperature. That's my main interest, personally. <laughs> um, the blue lights just, or the cool uh, LEDs just really create a different ambiance on the street. Um, <clears throat> yeah. My sense, my sense is that the, I mean, if the street lights are going to start to be the ones with the, the bracket, um, in the acorn with the cap, the black cap, that to have the the Washington, the 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 new fixture without the glazing, um, as our inside the park lights makes some sense. So that you have the the black cap with the arm and the black cap without the arm. Um, I'm not sure. It's an interesting thing for me looking at it. I don't know if because it's open, if there's more opportunity for dirt and leaves to get tangled up in there, um, or if it's actually less of a maintenance issue because it doesn't have the the glazing. I'm I'm mindful of that from a kind of taking care of it perspective, but. Uh, my inclination personally would be to go for the one with the, the cap as the new, so the, the new test light. Yeah, I mean, we're we're actually leading away from that one, to be honest. I mean, you know, the planning staff had recommended the other one in terms of, you know, we thought the Washington was heavy, bigger on the post. And so we're not changing out any of the posts or any dimensions. And so you know, the one with the finial seems strange that we don't really have a finial on any of the other fixtures or that kind of ornamentation. Mm -hmm. It could be removed. Yeah, from your, yeah. I will say from the pictures, the posts look exactly the same. So it's kind of hard right. to tell that part, but. No, no, they are the same posts. And so to me, the Washington is a bigger fixture. To me, it would seem like you'd want a wider or taller post to go with it, but oh. we would just be swapping you know, if, if that were the fixture we started, to, we would like to use downtown, we, you know, the, as needed would be swapped out. So it you know, it'd be a, you know, again, a kind of a phased approach to have a, a, the same fixture around downtown. Mm -hmm. 
don't know if there's any comments on that, the two different fixtures, if there's a preference in terms of, you know, the all glass and then with the interior shield or the other one that's open. Um, which one's the Washington? <laughs> yeah, the Washington one the, is the, uh, the black uh, one with the, the acorn cap that's open. And the Granville is the one with the um the glass. This is the Granville. Yeah, this is the Granville with you know the glass, and then the Washington is there's only one the Washington fixture. It's just as a like I said, as a trial in Kendrick. I Here personally think that one has more um, weathering capacity. Um, I don't know. It's I was going to say it shows less, you know, less of what's showing up in that picture. <laughs> so I don't know if that's actually true, but there's something kind of clean about having the black cap um, to my eye with the glass. Um, I don't feel strongly, I guess, is what I'm recognizing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Most things I feel strongly about this for some reason I don't feel particularly strongly. That's fair. Maybe Karen does. <laughs> Karen. I think the one without the glass is somehow more graceful. Yeah. But I do wonder what is easier to maintain. I mean, I could see leaves and dirt and debris, maybe birds making nests in it. Who yeah. knows? But from the optical side, I think it's more graceful. Mm -hmm. I like. It. Yeah, I would agree. I I like this one, but for the same re I'd have the same reservation. The other one looks old and dumpy. This this looks cleaner. Yeah, so. I think it has a a more contemporary look. And yeah, Nate, you mentioned that the um planners were concerned that somehow it was a little top heavy, maybe. But I. Right. I'm not seeing that here. No. Yeah, I, I honestly am in agreement. Um, I like the openness of it. And I like the kind of like balance of having the block come all the way up. Um, for what it's worth. Yeah, it sounds like you've got consensus from the DRB members about we we're in we prefer the fixture that's showing on the screen right now, the Washington. And do you like it with the, the finial on top or no finial? I don't know. It's a deal breaker. <laughs> finial or no finial? Uh, yeah. Probably do without the finial. A little fluffy. I don't have a strong feeling about the finial. I could see either way. Yeah, I yeah. Um, I, there's a new. Sh I'm sharing a, the actual web page. Is that visible? Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. It looks like you could get some glazing underneath. It's hard to see the difference, but you know where you, the one we have now, you can actually see the LED piece. And uh, it's like you yeah. get a shield for that. Um, you know, so the, you know this, like the difference being this, right? So you could see it or mm -hmm, hide it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you know, here's another image of it on a on a. It looks like a taller post, but um, I'm assuming you can meet. You know, the you know it's 2700k. Uh, you know, that's I think that's the kind of warmest they'll get. I don't think we'll get any warmer than that. Okay. Chris, did you want to share a thought? Yeah, um, Nate and I have talked about this a lot, and I was initially favoring the acorn light, the Granville, I guess it is. But yeah. I'm I'm noticing in looking at the Washington that it tends to recede into the background more. It's not as noticeable, and so maybe that's an advantage to the Washington that it um, isn't kind of jumping out at you. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of going in that direction now as opposed to the way I felt, say, yesterday or last week. So just wanted to share that. Thank you. Appreciate that you've been struggling with this. <laughs> um, I, I do think that having um, 
having a, 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 a glass or whatever that surface is, a cover over the light fixture, the light bulbs itself is a good idea because it can reduce the hot spot when you look at it. So I like that idea. Feelings about the finial, no finial. I think that the the street lights, do they have it? Maybe this is a place to look for consistency. Well, Ms. really, who's going to be looking at the finial? Who's going to be inside the park? Uh, if you can get it with the, out the finial, then take out the finial. But I don't think that's a deal breaker, whether you have it. Yeah. That thing sticking on top or not? Yeah, the street lights. I mean, they don't, they don't really. I mean, they have something. I guess kind of reminiscent. No, of it. they wouldn't have. You know. Yeah, they don't have the the, the little bit there on right. the. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're not the same. You know, family. So it's not like you know the Washington post top light is the same as this. This is actually um, like two different pieces. From the company that are put together to make this the light and then the shield yeah it's kind of an inverted shape right the og okay um all right i want to keep us moving on catherine mentioned uh an interest in the the, the benches and the chairs um, group benches and chairs around the table that they should have a similar uh, look, feel, materials, colors, etc. Um, that's something that came up for me as well, and I'm wondering if anybody else has thoughts on that. Um, I would also say I'm in agreement with uh, freestanding chairs when possible. Um, could be a real advantage because then somebody could move a chair to have a group of five. On, on those small locations where the the tables and chairs exist. So, yeah, so right now we're showing a number of benches, you know, in the crescent areas along the walkway. So I think, you know, there's a dozen or so benches. Yeah. And then the idea would be to have seating for 30 or so people in the central area, you know, 25 or 30. So, I mean, are we, are you saying to have tables here as well or really just have- No, 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 no. I think that, that um, the, the the benches seem decided, right? They're the same as Kendrick Park. Seems like it makes right. sense to continue with those. You showed a set of tables that was quite right. different. Sure. And Oval not putting any words into Catherine's mouth, but she was saying that like they should be, or maybe it was Karen, I'm sorry. Um, they should share an aesthetic. Yeah, uh, that's yes. what I said, yeah. yeah. And then there was also a, a, an inquiry as to whether the chairs could be freestanding um, at, at that dining area, yeah. <clears throat> not attached. Mm. And I would second both of those comments. All right. Yeah, I think there's less of a concern now about them leaving the site. I think originally people wanted to have this kind of one, you know, one unit, it's heavy, it's hard to move, but I don't really think that you know, someone's going to carry the chairs off. They might move them somewhere else on the park, but I think there had been some concern initially that, you know, they would disappear completely. Mm -hmm. And, you oh. know, since the pandemic, we've had more furniture and furnishings outside around town. And that really isn't kind of the, we haven't seen that <laughs> happen. So. Are there, uh, are there going to be cameras inside the park? We've talked about, somebody taking the chair can we catch that culprit gonna be on a camera we have not talked about any security like that okay i mean people could take those chairs way off from the tables and it could be a real inconvenience when you go to sit down you you see the chair clear up by the town hall um uh, i have a little reservation about that but mm -hmm. we're saying that it seems to work so yeah. yeah, I mean, the chairs that are at Boltwood, it wouldn't be that style necessarily, but they're pretty heavy and sturdy. And so it's not not very easy to move them far. I mean, I think you could move them around the sitting area or outside a little bit, but it's not, I think it would take two people to carry them on this plan to say in front of Town Hall. It wouldn't be uh -huh. an easy move. And I'm wondering if, do you have any observational data on the freestanding chairs behind, or on Boltwood that 
have they stuck around? They have, yeah, nothing's, yeah, nothing's gone missing. And and I think originally we had thought even like using like, you know, I don't wanna say folding chairs here, right? But chairs that were, could be moved around more easily. And, you know, at Kendrick, we had used the four tables or four chairs and a table. And I think, you know, I think we can do that. I, like I said, I think Emmy O'Brien, the, um, the, the uh, company we use, they're really trying to see if the, we can mimic the bench in a chair. So mm -hmm. same style, you know, same arms, everything, just instead of being a six foot bench, it'd be a, you know, whatever it needs to be a two foot chair. Uh, and then doing a square, a two foot by two foot square table to match. And so I, you know, I'm waiting to hear back. They thought it was possible. It's just not something that is advertised. All right. And if, and, if that's the preference, you know, I think I agree. I think when Chris and I met with the town manager the other week, he had the same thought that it was strange to see, you know, different types of furnishings in this space. Agreed. Of, you know, kind of style and design. All right. And and Chris, go ahead. Oh, that brings up the issue of the picnic tables that are shown here on the North Common. And I think Nate and I would prefer not to have picnic tables here and to go along with Catherine's idea of having those picnic tables on the southern part of the common. They just don't seem to fit as well here. This is kind of like the front or the living room of the town, right? It's mm -hmm. the front room, as they used to say, and it's um kind of elegant. And to have, you know, wooden picnic tables here, I just think doesn't really add to the ambiance. So I wondered if the DRB members had any thought about that. Um, we do have picnic tables on the common now, both the north and the south. Well, not the north now because it's under construction, but on the south common, we have wooden picnic tables and they're fine in that kind of informal location. But how do you feel about having picnic tables mm. here as opposed to on the southern part? I say no picnic tables keep them in the southern part. I'm glad to hear you say that. <laughs> I'd like to ensure that there's an accessibly accessible eating or table surface. Um, is the that oval with the tables and chairs, is that a step up or is that just a, a, a change in surface that I'm seeing there? Yeah, no, this should be all accessible. So what we're seeing okay. here is either you know, I don't know if it's a, if it's, if there's actually a drain. So this walkway is sloped this way. Yeah. And then this is sloped this way. So this might actually be a, um, I don't know if it's proposed to be a drain at all, but it, there's no step. Okay. And this should be, you know, flush and accessible right in off the walkway. Okay. Cause it, it's labeled central raised sitting area with granite wall. And I was, um, I think it's, it's raised because the, um, the grade on the along on the other side where the plantings are is it's above grade. So on the east side facing right. Boatwood Avenue, and on the south side, it's above grade. Okay. On, the yeah, side, I, it is it's labeled drainage grade on the on the plan with contours. So that's yeah, so I think that's, that's probably good. what it You're is. You're right about that. Okay. Yeah, I mean those picnic tables, I you know, they're to me they would they're you know. I don't want to say temporary, but they could be relocated, right? So this is just shown as an area where we could have informal seating or picnic tables. Okay. And Lindsay, were you raising your hand to jump um, in? I was. I I kind of like the picnic tables, but I, I can I can do without like something formal, but I do appreciate the idea of having places where people can can be. I mean, I have spent many 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 years i'm sure all of us have like trying to find a place to sit <laughs> and eat a lunch in that area and you know i i i do get the informal nature of it so i don't know if, i wonder if there's a way to kind of neutralize it a bit and make it um i don't know but uh my actual interest is in the walkways so art did you say those are pavers, the curved paths? No, that's this is this is just asphalt. This is blacktop that's on the asphalt. Interior. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I can't, I'm trying to remember if like there's a crushed stone that would be an accessible material. I I feel like there is. Um, 
I mean, it can be, it just has to be maintained, right? If, if, yeah. it's, if it's loose. Um, is that an, is that a, is that something that's been talked about as an option? Yeah. I mean, the walkways are, you know, this was like four and three quarter percent. And so they're at a pretty, uh, you know, right below the threshold to be, you know, something else. Right. So they're pretty steep. And so I think some of the thought would be at four and a half percent. Most of these are, you know, so pretty, you know, on the steeper side of a walkway uh, that um, it will carry water. So having any loose material would be become a maintenance issue if, you know, if you're getting a lot of uh, kind of surface flow on these. Um, yeah, I think that that's, you know, that's a, obviously a valid point. I, I think that there's also advantages to the crushed stone over the asphalt. I mean, it's, it's, uh, permeable material for one, um, it will slow down traffic like bikes and skateboards and stuff like that to some extent. Um, there's also just a really, um, you know, there's a sound quality to it that makes walking on it, um, a different type of experience, um, and just kind of an, a natural aesthetic. So I'm curious to hear other people's thoughts on that, or if that's even something that can be considered given the maintenance factor. I'm a huge advocate of crushed down, so <laughs> you guys can just say no and I'll go on my way. But I do think that that would be a really nice, um, a nice location for it. Chris, your hand is up. Is that on, on this particular topic? Yes, I would advise against crushed stone on these walkways um, for the reason that Nate said. Some of them are inching towards 5%, which is really going to um, cause water to run down them. And, you know, um, there are going to be runnels formed. And the town has very little money to maintain anything. And that's one of the things that um, was talked about a lot when we were developing the design for this you know, people were saying, we can't maintain what we have now, and now you're creating something more to be maintained. So I think erring on the side of low maintenance is really the way that, you know, I would recommend going, um, because I don't think if we did put in um, crushed stone paths here that they would be well maintained. That's fair. Yeah, thanks for that that insight and um you know it, it's an interesting thing it's like okay we have um have to have to keep in mind like the 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 budget for this project and the maintenance for the project um you know it'd be if we move away from the 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 crushed stone there it seems like all of the other all the other paving surfaces seem really well thought out to kind of make, uh, identify a place and um, kind of fit that that into that maintenance scheme as well. Uh, Karen, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't see your hand. Um, really. So I particularly have always hated the asphalt look and our driveways, two, both of our driveways are oil and stone. So there's an oil base with crushed stone and it's held up really well. And the person that put it in Pioneer Stone said it will just get harder over the years. It doesn't work if you're going to plow, uh, but if you're gonna snow blow, it's, it's fine. And it looks so much more appealing than asphalt. I wonder if you've thought of that. It, it is initially, I think probably not that much more expensive, I don't know. Um, but it's been years now and it, it hasn't caused maintenance problems. <clears throat> yeah, and I think I'm, I'm, I would, uh, I like the look, the feel, the sound, the, the quality of a, a crushed stone as well. And maybe one thing we could do would be to ask the town to consider what the maintenance implications are and whether the water running down at a, a 
4.75% slope would be um, uh, cause degradation at a rate that they couldn't manage. I mean, I think that it's, I'm hearing from the board and I, I know that I agree that the, we'd like to see a different surface on asphalt. Yeah, I think not, if the town can care for it, then we can't really ask for that. We had considered like oil and stone, and that actually goes over an asphalt base. So yeah. typically, you would actually have a, at least a sub, you know, one course of asphalt, and then you put oil and stone down. Um, it, I, you know, it probably was budgetary reasons that it was removed. Could have been maintenance. You know, even um, in terms of having like a looser stone, you know, that's something that we wouldn't. Um, probably recommend for maintenance and for water. So even, you know, at uh, Hickory Ridge, where we're proposing some trails in some areas, we're gonna have, you know, some blacktop or something just for accessibility reasons as well, because the maintenance of it could be a lot. So I think that given the slope and the possible use here, we wouldn't have anything, you know, too loose. I think like oil and stone would be kind of the next best alternative to asphalt if that's, but I'm not sure that's in the budget. Uh, Catherine and then Karen. Yeah. Okay. Well, I I agree with the look of something other than asphalt, but I'm going to support the planning board on this. Uh, I think we have to be realists, and again, the ma the maintenance of it, and it's going to have to be plowed. We can't think somebody's going to come in with a snowblower and make a miracle sidewalk. Plus. Uh, just the access for maybe somebody in a walker or a wheelchair uh, that, and, and this is supposed to be a, a, an area where we can accommodate people who need some support. So as much as I like the look of what everybody's saying, I think we have to get real. Plus we're pretty advanced in the whole scheme of this park and now to try to uh, re revamp some of the materials may be asking a little too much. So, that's it. Thanks, Catherine. Karen, go ahead. Um, I, I think this, a walkway will probably, is it going to be plowed, Nate? And uh, I, I must say that our driveway, as it gets older and harder, it's not, the surface is, fine for wheelchairs and walkers. It's not very loose. It's not like a loose crushed stone at all. It just has the look of um, of stone, but the function is, so uh, the thing that I, I would agree, if it's not in the budget, it's not in the budget, but this is, is really the center of our town. It's the town common. Um, and for many years, the whole aesthetics is going to, you know, it's it's our center. So uh, I wonder, Nate, if, if it's not possible, it's not possible, but whether one could get an estimate and see what the difference is and then and then be sure that the maintenance is something that's easy and, and that it doesn't cause trouble. I think that's a reasonable middle ground is that we can, as the DRB, we can make a recommendation that the the town do the, the, the pricing and maintenance research and then identify whether it's something that they can basically upgrade, right, from the, the asphalt pathways. Anything. Yeah, yeah, I think that's something we can look into. I mean, I, you know, I don't know if it's something that can be done after the fact too, or if you have to account for some kind of differential in the stone height to make it yeah. flush. But um, yeah, right. and there's a curb on some of the edges and not on others, and if it would require curbing on all edges, then of course that would change the cost considerably. But yeah, you don't. You know, I don't think you need curbing on that. You just have to be able. You know, you, yeah. it's just kind of when you install it, you just have to be aware of that. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've talked about lighting, we've talked about the pathway surfaces, we've talked about chairs and tables. I had one comment about the signage. Um, you showed us the, the post with the interpretive sign on the top. 
Um, and I would just ask, I think that the, the post be painted the same color as the, as the benches so that we have like all the same green metal for the incidentals and then the black for the lighting and the color palette, very simple and neutral. Yeah, I think the color for the benches will be, um, you know, we're looking at something that it's something similar to this or greenish gray. Yeah, it's a, I don't know if they call it, um, yeah, whatever they, it's like a, a kind of a gray. Um, it doesn't read that well here. Uh, I think they call it Sudan, don't they? Or Carlsbad. Right? I forgot what we. Yeah, uh, something like that. It's Gento, kind of. A I forgot what we. What they sand actually. colored. Yeah. We weren't thinking of the green for this. Um, yeah, I, comment. I, I, it, red is kind of greenish gray to me, and I haven't actually been outdoors for the last three months. So <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been to Kendrick Park. Um, but yes, yeah, so like if they were all the same color, then maybe the, the the post of the signage could be in that same family. Yeah. So what the the do more is the company, and so here's their color palette. So I think you know we're somewhere in here. I think maybe it was Sudan was the color of the bench. Sudan's better. Thank you. Um, are there any other comments for Nate this evening about Kendrick Park? Or sorry, North Common, not Kendrick Park. North yeah, I'm just taking one more uh, swipe around. Are you saying that that bench is, that we've been looking at, is the bench, or are you going to try to find a bench that seems more compatible with the table? That bench. No, no so that's, that's the bench. And the idea is to actually get make that bench into a chair. Uh, for the central oh. sitting area, so then the chair I, is similar to the bench. I, I did, well, okay. I don't. I think that bench is not very attractive, but maybe it's the angle. I think if you look at the bench at straightforward, but at that side view, uh, it's not. I'm. I was hoping that would be changed to match the chairs, but you're saying you're going to get the chairs to match the bench, right? Because okay. we approved that bench at. Um, in other locations in Amherst. Oh, okay. Okay, but, that bench looks better. <laughs> I think maybe yeah, this is this is this is the bench. All right. Okay. I'm gonna, okay. Off. I'll I'll drop that. Uh, it must have been the color that threw me off. Okay. All right. Yeah, I the color it, in the it was, angle. It was kind of grainy. Yes. I think it was. Yeah. Reduced, yeah. It's the angle. I think it's the angle. Okay. All right. I'll back off. Sometimes photos don't do justice for they site don't. furnishings, Catherine. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. If only the bench could speak. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to try to summarize the the key points. Um, Rob, <laughs> correct me if I if I missed anything. So um, with regards to the light fixtures, we like the open fixture, all black with a cap, no finial. And we do like uh, a screen over the, I anyways weighed in on this, a screen over the, the LED light. Um, we like the, we would like the table and chairs to mimic the bench style would generally prefer freestanding chairs rather than fixed. Um, we prefer crushed stone or oil and stone for the in, inner park walkways and would appreciate it if the town would research the cost and maintenance implications of a material change in that design feature. We didn't have consensus on the picnic tables, but I think if you have grant money to buy them, you should, <laughs> and then relocate them if you <laughs> they don't feel like they fit here.
did I miss anything? Those the color things? of the interpretive signs. So there's a consistent color of interpretive color. Sign, right? To match the other furnishings, so like the trash can, the chair, and the yes. benches. Yes. And then I saw, um, just looking through my notes, saw something about more circular benches. I don't know if that was Karen who brought that up, but I mean, do we explore that further or was it kind of an abandoned idea that we just, we're just going to have the benches that were sort of the freestanding or the ones that are more fixed to the natural site features? I just want to kind of clarify with that. I guess what the reason was behind that uh, suggestion that was brought up. That was the first comment of the night. Karen, do you remember? Do you want to clarify there? Yeah, I I just was worried about the having the fixed four chairs there as mm -hmm. not giving okay. enough uh, possibility. And yeah. I know that you can have fixed, you know, just benches that are not chairs where you can scoot many people on. So I was that my idea was just um, the four benches seem a little bit inflexible. So you um, so I guess that could be incorporated into the freestanding benches suggestion then. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you for clarifying that. So yeah, I, I guess, would just, you know, there are so many fixed benches throughout the park. If there are a dozen benches like this, that one oval with the tables and chairs, mm -hmm. maybe the place mm -hmm. to focus on tables and individual chairs. But if they're movable, yeah. then you could cluster them together in different ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rather or, than introducing yeah. benches there as well. Also, yeah, the seating, the understand. walls are seating walls. Mm -hmm. seating walls so I just wanted to mention yeah. that. Yep. <clears throat> Catherine? So I sort of thought what, what you were referring to, Corin, was having a having tables with benches instead of yeah. chairs. And I'm bit, so so three kids could scoot on one side. Is you not the freestanding benches, but replace the chairs with uh, tables that had. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Not talking about other benches, other places. Right. Yeah, that's my understanding. I mean, my thought is if we had, you know, five tables here, maybe we have, you know, four chairs that are movable at each table, but maybe we have some extra chairs in places that can be, you know, pulled up differently to different tables or however, right? So we have like some extra chairs so we can accommodate different yeah. size groups. Probably not as easy as having a, a table with benches, um, you know, if you bring a bunch of little kids, you as I said, you can squish a lot of kids on one side and somebody on the other side, rather than having chairs, have benches, or have a table with some benches, not those benches. <laughs> no, I mean, if this is you know, if this were the options, right? There so you go. Yeah. What we have at uh, Kendrick Park is this one. Um, you know, not this color though, right? Right. Yeah. So what the offer would be, you know. I mean, you could do standard picnic tables. Here's one with, you know, a set of four. It's really hard to get more. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because well, I think you can have work. I'm hearing benches. I'm thinking more like, um, I don't really see it here. I, mean, I guess this one has like five or six, but. Yeah, something more like that. Yeah. As, or that you don't seem to have a, a table with, with, with a thick circular bench, that's yeah, what exactly. circular bench. Yeah, that's... I've seen those, and they don't seem to be any of those options. You and know, I mean, yeah, I don't. I know what you're talking about too. I was hoping they would have a, mo a model here. That would... yeah, you don't have it. So okay, right, all right, okay. I do. I also just um. I have two little kids, and so I I can say like it's not so much even just like how many you can get in, but being able to like sit right next to your kid. I think that they have them at um that ice cream place uh that has the maple maple farm. They have those circular tables with the like circular bench, and it really does help to be able to kind of like nest up and have that flexibility. I think the flexibility is the key is what I'm getting at. Karen and Catherine. Place. Yeah, exactly. The Maplewood Ice Cream Place, I think, has those fixed tables with circular, and it's great. 
I think um, just from the comments provided, it seems the focus on the tables and chairs, just mm -hmm. finding a style that's more flexible is the most important thing. Am I correct on that? Like it's like flexible as in like, you're not limited to how many people can sit there. Like if you have little kids, you could definitely double up, you know, or have people sit on more one chair. I mean, huh. or sorry, multiple people on the same chair, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So freestanding. Freestanding, yes. Benches combined with chairs or all benches. I did. Yeah, yeah. So it, we'll have to, we'll have to, you'll have to find something and. I mean, is, is it like, this? it's not like this necessarily. Well, those are all fixed, but. Well, I mean. Yeah, I think... it's more like that. You see yeah. that? That's, that's the idea. Is yeah, it? exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Fixed like that one right there, the green one. Yeah, that's exactly what I think we're thinking about. Uh, and those are kind of like fixed benches. They are, fixed. but it does provide that flexibility and that openness to where more people can sit. Yeah, right. and yeah, it's, it's less limiting. Of not having things yeah. under off, but provides yeah. more. Yes, exactly. Those. Like you have the option to sit facing out or facing yeah. in if you wanted to. Yep. Like if I ever went to a bench like that, I'd probably be facing out, eating my ice cream or doing whatever. Yeah, this is a cleaner look than the last one that we saw. Right. I think yeah. that, yep. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it's interesting. Usually we'd have chairs with backs just if that's needed and arms. Well, if there's a package, if there's a, a designer that provides a package where you could provide a, a bench and a couple of chairs right. or a bench and a chair, depending on the table size, then that would provide the flexibility for somebody who needs arms on the chair to help them with mobility, right. um, that kind of thing. It can be that that population of people also needs to be accommodated. So, yeah. you know, the, the variety, I think, is the key. And I'm yeah, right. kind of hearing from everybody that there's exactly. Yeah. So you could have maybe two or three tables as you first identified with movable chairs, and then you could have maybe one table with the benches around. So you could, I don't know how you'd fit it, but I mean, that's might be a compromise too. Not everything has to be the same, but we'd be answering everybody's concerns. For a wheelchair, the benches don't work, but for a bunch of kids, the benches work. So. Yeah, I mean the 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 company has curved benches, and so you know if it's something like um, you know they could be similar to the the bench style that we have or the um, you know, so it could be something like that that's curved around a table, um, that's visible. Uh -huh. But we could do something uh, that matches. Sure. I, yeah, I think I'll work with the. Uh, the rep and see what they come up with, what they can do. Okay. Thanks for your patience as we kind of walk through all of these things, Nate. It's nice to think it's important to hear the 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 range of perspectives. Um okay, anything else? I do have one question of the board. Um so are you guys going to vote to approve of recommendations tonight or do you want to see updated renderings? Like what's the feel? I know it's a tough question. That's why I wanted to ask. Yeah, I, it is. It's tough. I don't know. Nobody wants to hold up the process, but we, we asked you to kind of return to the research well for a couple of big ones. So Chris. We're in a bit of a time crunch um, because mm. of the grants that we're working under. So um, it would probably be difficult for us to return in a month, although I'll look to Nate and to tell me whether that's realistic or not. Yeah, probably not. But um, yeah, I mean, the, we have to, I have to figure out the lead time on the furnishing. Some of it would be if we have consensus on a number of things, it'd be great to get those ordered right so if it's yeah you know lighting or certain things and if we need to and if the benches are all set it's really then just kind of that central sitting area then we can you know we can 
uh, figure out what are some options. But if everything else seems good, then that would be helpful just so we could start getting an order together. Do you think we should come back, Nate, with uh, alternatives in a month? I, I think that's, I mean, it's much. That's getting really close. I think what, I'm, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a pitch to the DRB members that we have made our intentions clear with regards to both the features of the seating and its aesthetics, right? They should coordinate with the benches, the, the, the fixed benches throughout the park. So if you could find a range of benches and freestanding chairs that work with the aesthetic and color of the other benches around the park that we're willing to approve. Mm -hmm. The lighting, I think we're good to go on. And then the other one was the kind of the, the, the big one was the, uh, if there's a change in the surface of the, uh, of the walkways. And that's something for, it's not a, I think it's a decision that we, we don't have enough information tonight to weigh in on maintenance and cost. It's not, our purview. So we're asking you to go back, have that conversation. If you can, you know that that's what we would prefer. And if you can't, you go forward with asphalt. Mm -hmm. Rob. I guess as the DRB staff leads, and I can also act as a set of eyes and just look at what Nate and Chris, I, I haven't really been much involved with this at all. So I could be the set of eyes that look at what they're ordering. And mm -hmm. to see if it complies with a lot of the recommendations that are being brought up. And then I guess if it's okay with Nate and Chris and the rest of the board members, I could also share with members individually to not violate open meeting law, um, what these styles look like, just so you're in the loop um, after the fact. Mm -hmm. and I guess for the bigger decisions, like the maintenance of the oil and stone versus the asphalt, I mean, that's probably going to be a lot more difficult to do, but um, I'm sure you'll understand one way or another, whatever decision's made, that's probably the most cost effective. Yes. I think that's good. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if we get information, we can share it. And then, you know, if, through straw poll, if it needs to be brought back, we can do that. But yeah. But we understand the time constraint, Nate and Chris. Yeah. And I think we want to provide yeah. you enough information tonight to go forward without having to to circle back to the to the board. Karen, I saw your hand up earlier. Was that to make a motion by any chance? Yeah, I, I make a motion to approve that they don't have to come back because they've heard clearly our recommendations and our preferences. But as I totally agree that if this is cost prohibitive that to follow the oil and stone, then go ahead and do the asphalt. It's just our strong recommendation, our wish and our plea that this is, you know, a really central kernel, the kernel of our, the aesthetic kernel of our town that um that we really try to get this as right as possible but i wouldn't hold it up and i i agree with with everything that you've said um erica so if you want i can make an emotion that we just um accept this um and Proved with the recommendations as the recommendations to follow if possible follow the uh, direction of going with oil and stone for the pathways. If it's not cost prohibitive, that would be our preference. And uh, and as far as the benches are, that you uh, also try to have flexibility and think of, uh, of all the people that you have to accommodate, but we trust you to do, um, to, to do this in the way that you proposed will be fine. Very hard to make this proposal. So, second. Sorry. Good job. Great. Rob, Rob will edit that. <laughs> um, okay, Thanks, I heard yeah. a second from Lindsay. So, um, all those in favor of the, the motion from Karen to approve with recommendations, et cetera, raise your hand, say aye. Aye. Okay, that's everyone. Unanimous. Thanks. Great. Thank you for coming tonight and hearing us out. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. And, and please feel you know, free to stick around. Use the common. It'll be done. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be fantastic. Could have kept going all winter long this year. The, the contractors wanted to. Um, you know, it was a little messy. Uh, was that like, you know a month ago? But they were they were they were willing actually <laughs> to work through the winter. Well, thank you thanks. both. Great.
Yeah, Feel free to stick you. around. Thanks for showing up tonight. And um, okay, so we'll keep moving along. Uh, we'll hear from uh, Amherst College. So I have two individuals in attendance who I am giving um, panelists privileges to. They should be joining us shortly. Fantastic. Good afternoon. My name is Ralph Johnson. I'm going to switch my camera. <laughs> there we go. That's Hi, much Mr. better. Johnson. Glad thank you're you. here. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much for having me. Rob, thank you for uh, granting me the permission to be able to change my view. Uh, I am excited to be with you all here tonight, and we want to thank the Design Review Board for reviewing our application for what we call the Amherst College Store which will be located at 45 South Pleasant Street or the former A.J. Hastings location. I'm privileged to serve as the executive director of campus operations here at the college. And I'm joined by our designer, Janine Ludwig from the Follett Higher Education Group. Follett will actually be running this retail, this store for us. So I'd like to give you a very quick and brief overview of the application and then turn things over to Janine to walk through our proposed design for you. Do you have Again, the ability, I'm sorry to interrupt, do you have the ability to screen share or would you like me to do that on your behalf? That's something I usually offer for if, presenters. Thank you so much. If you would give Janine the ability to screen share, that would be perfect. Janine, you should have that, I think. Yeah, you should. Thank you so much for that. Um, mm -hmm. Now, the space that we're talking about, everyone, if you just picture the former AJ Hastings space, uh, we're hoping to open the Amherst College store early in May. And this store is going to be selling Amherst College branded merchandise, as well as a very small selection of convenience and technology items. We're hoping it's also a place for students to pick up their course materials, not trade books, but textbooks. Um, we're hoping they can pick their course materials up there uh, through an, an initiative that we are uh, hoping to provide all course materials free of charge, well, all course materials to our students at the first day of class, uh, a challenge that uh, has plagued some of our students here over the years. Uh, we're again partnering with Follett in this initiative, and they are the ones that are leading the fit out of the store. Uh, because this store is in the Town Common Design Review District, you know, we want to point out that this application is really building upon and expanding upon the recent application by South Pleasant Street LLC, uh, which the DRB reviewed on January 29th. Uh, that previous application showed uh, a proposed exter exterior renovation of the Hastings building, as well as a proposed new apartment building in the back of that building. In our application here today, we're providing you information on the exterior signage for the store, the window decals, and the replacement of the awning fabric. So we're really talking about that facade that faces south. And with that, uh, Janine will be able to tell you more about our proposed design. We thank you for your time and consideration and look forward to your feedback. Janine. Hello, thank you very much. Um, we are proposing uh, to add, uh, remove the existing sign, um, which will be a similar material as to what we're putting in. We're putting on a, um, it's cut out of a Sintra material. Um, it'll be applied um, to, there is a, a black glass currently in the space or on the space and um, then we will also be using a laser cut uh, vinyl um, with the Mastodon logo, and then again, uh, laser cut signage in the window as well. And did you wanna show your images or should should I do that? Oh, I'm sorry, you? I thought it it's showing that I'm sharing. Oh. Let me see if I could change the options. Uh, Sorry about that. 
So is it showing your specific document, Janine, or is it showing yeah. your screen? Janine, are you frozen? Yeah, I think Janine is frozen. Well, I can screen share. I we have. Oh no, it's going. It's going. There we go. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Do you do you see now? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Sorry about that. Okay. Great. Give you a moment to take a look and um, see if there's any comments. All right. Thank you for the images. We all have them in our packets, but it's always nice to have it on the screen so we can yes. listen to it if we need to. Um, I will open the floor to members of the of the board. Lindsay, I see your hand. Hello, thank you for um, the presentation. This is an exciting uh, rebirth of Hastings, and um, you know I think it looks really clean and um, and inviting. Um, I'm. Is this this isn't there already, right? It's just no, no, it's really not. a realistic rendering with the glass reflection and everything. Um, yes, yeah, we put it on the an actual image, so yeah. okay, right. I mean, I've driven by and I think I would have noticed it, but um, so a couple of things catch my eye. Um, I mean, it's very, very clean, which I appreciate. I feel like I and I, I don't have an issue with the black um gloss material I, I i do feel like the text the font is um it's just it's it's feeling off to me for some reason and i think it's i think it's because it feels more like a um something that you you know a, a font that i would expect to see on like a document versus a sign i think it's something about the kind of the uppercase lowercase but also just the kind of like old type font um and i and also the size of it and the size of the letters um so the combination of the font type and the and the size feels just feels odd to me it feels kind of like it it needs I, I, the, the the above is is um really simple and clean um and honestly i prefer it to be more in line with something like that so I'm curious, have you done any explorations on different font types? And... Um, this is actually, uh, the Amherst College is from um, directly from the college's word mark. Mm -hmm. And then um, the addition uh, of this, the word store has been added to that. So it's using um, the Amherst fonts. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, um, the was you know created as part as uh, the name that was agreed on by the school, and um, so actually the artwork was created by uh, Joanna Mahoney from Amherst. So I would just be curious if there was any flexibility with I I recognize the font as you know being part of Amherst College is um, you know it's their branding and I and I recognize that. And maybe there's no other option that they would consider, but I do think that, and I'd be curious to hear what the board thinks, but I do think it'd be worth exploring some other type faces if they are willing to be flexible on that. Um, yes, as far as that goes, I mean, um, for Follett, we do not use any of our um, branding and we use directly from the schools that we work with. So that would be more on um, their end of what they would accept. We would definitely be willing to take that back. And I'm sorry that I'm having video problems now, but we would definitely be willing to take that back to our communications team uh, to review and see what is possible there. And Lindsay, from listening to your feedback, it seemed like you liked the font uh, that was there for the word the something similar to that i think it's simply that it's in all caps and it's a sans serif and so it's clean and, and easy to read but i don't think that it needs to necessarily be that particular font it's simply the the contrast of the two and i lean toward the 
simplicity and and the kind of um the style of of the font in the word the um let's hear from some other board members on on this particular topic um karen are you would you like to weigh in about the yes yes the i would like to weigh on it because okay. um lindsay put that into words which instinctively came up to me too i just it does look like i'm looking at um you know um a document it's clean it's attractive but i would also appreciate your you're playing with other I mean it, it still has to blend in with the other signs in the town uh and yeah I, I agree with everything that Lindsay has said Catherine thoughts yeah uh I'm more or less okay with this you know I was driving driving by just the other day and I know that AJ, the Hastings sign that's been there for so long was sort of a historical reminder of the store. And I thought in the back of my head, wouldn't it be great if they left it called it left it called Hastings, but underneath the, the Amherst College store. But I see that's not gonna happen. But I it did prompt me to think if there's going to be any acknowledgement uh about this historical store. There is the building just above the windows that we see on the image here. There, oh, okay. The, the oh, building is right. named the Hastings. Yeah, building or the yeah Hastings okay. Block. Yeah, so okay. that's there. We also plan to have, when you walk into the store, a memorializing plaque. Uh, okay, all right. Paying tribute to A.J. Hastings. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was my question. Thank you. So I, I so rarely disagree with Lindsay and Karen, but I actually, I do think that the, the from a, both from a kind of branding and consistency perspective that keeping the, the Amherst College word mark makes some sense. Um, I'm not opposed to it on the sign, but if our request is simply that you explore, that Amherst College explore other options, I'm open to that. Um, my sense is that it's just a scooch too large, and I would like to see the the size of the white lettering come down a little bit. It just feels like it's yelling at us from across the block in a way that it won't need to. The white on the black is so pronounced. Um, I think it could come down a bit, but if we're asking you to explore other uh font design choices, then that may be a moot point. So um, yeah. Ralph, I think I, I heard you say that that kind of going back to the designers for options here would be something that you, you could do. We will review that action you've given us expeditiously. The question that we have, which of course we abide by the council of this DRB would be, would there be a way for us to expedite an approved sign um, before the next DRB meeting? It's really hard for us to go back and forth without the, you know, with staying uh, in accommodating open meeting law. Um, we could all vote on something individually, but it would it's it's not an ideal scenario. Um, we understand uh, we'll the reason why. In a, in a month. Yeah. No, thank you, Erica. Uh, the motive behind my request is, once we do have an approved sign, the lead time on the sign will probably be six to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, an approved sign today means we've got an approved sign when we open. Uh, but making sure that we fit in with the existing design and feel of the town, of course, is paramount. Yeah. And our partnership with the town is paramount. So we want to make sure that we are in compliance with the wishes of the DRB, and we would have to be prepared to move with the temporary signage on the inside of the windows when we open. And that's just all it means. Okay. But we've got to get this right. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we've we've done um, 
some simpler choices uh, by straw vote <laughs> uh, outside of a, a, a formal meeting in the past. Um, but I think that if we're looking at font options, it's going to be a, a, a more complex conversation. And I'd prefer to do that as a as a group. Karen? Um, I think I came out maybe a little bit too strong in, in the font. I think I agree that if the size were smaller, um, that's for me is the biggest stumbling part, the fact that it somehow it has this um, unique font, which is in keeping with what Amherst College does, but it's also that that font is so big. So I could go along with it or if it were smaller, if we, if it had to be expedited. Okay, thank you for that. Chris? Hi, I just wanted to mention that Amherst College recently developed a whole wayfinding sign system, and I think this is the font that they use in their wayfinding sign system. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if Ralph would know that or not, but um, I'm just mentioning that because you know, there's some sort of consistency there. If they are using this font in the signs that they're putting up around town, maybe it makes sense to not alter this font. Just a suggestion. Thank you. I am not able to answer that question, but I can definitely get the answer. Dig deep. Um, all right, we didn't talk about the uh, purple mammoth. Um, I love it. I think it's great. Um, or the uh, the signage, uh, the vinyl signage on the the window itself. Does anybody have comments on that? I just want to make sure that we touch on all the bits. Well, I love the mammoth. I'm not sure the Amherst College store sign is necessary since right above it, it says Amherst College store. But um, if there's a reason for it, it's fine. But I definitely like the big purple mammoth. Lindsay, go ahead. Um, I'm also in favor of the mammoth. I really like the use of the storefront um, panel sizes of the, the glazing to kind of create the um, the proportions for the the decal and the lettering. I think probably it does, like when you're walking along the sidewalk there, you probably don't see the, the sign above um, as easily. So I think it does make sense to have signage on the storefront as well. And I concur, <laughs> just piggybacking on the previous discussion that if that font were to reduce in size, I think it would really um, be be workable. So. Okay. All right. So then it sounds just like- Just to clarify, are yeah. we talking about um, the, the, the proportion to the the, or just the entire sign altogether? Um, I'll, I'll say what I, I'll clarify what I meant when I spoke and then let others weigh in. I think that the, the relationship of the white letters on the black rectangle background, um, is what I was referring to. So I'd like to see the size, size of Amherst College store come down by I don't, about four inches or so and be centered in the black so that we see more black around the white letters. The relationship of the the to the, the, the word Amherst, I think is proportional and, and good. I agree with all that. Okay. I agree with all that. I agree. Okay, great. Rob. Just a, a comment um, about the elephant. I like how the elephant is coming, is more off center and looks like it's running in from the side towards the main entrance. And I think stylistically that's really appealing. And I just want to appraise the design team for, for incorporating that. Thank you. 
<laughs> awesome. Yeah, mammoths on the run. Yeah. Okay. So then, um, if I could ask for any, um, oh, I'm sorry, Ralph, go ahead. Sure, thank you. I, I hear that we have general agreement to reduce the words Amherst College store by about four inches. Um, did I also hear that we're okay with the exact font style? I'm not sure if there was agreement on that or not. Yeah, I there was. Okay. Came around to if the if if the height of those letters comes down a little bit, that it's it's not quite as big, um, that it will be better. Thank you. All right, may I request uh, a motion to approve with the recommendation to reduce the size of the words Amherst College store on the black background? I move to, sorry, go ahead, Kathy. I, I so move. Right. In a, a second, second, then, Lindsay, is there any, any further discussion? Okay, in that case, uh, all those who are in favor of the recommendation to approve with, or the motion to approve with recommendations, please say aye. Aye. Make it clear. Aye. Catherine, I saw your hand as well. Okay, that's approval. Unanimous, thank you very much. Excited to see this store opening up. Reactivate the Hastings block. We thank you very much. Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Okay, team, we are getting there. Um, <laughs> the next item on tonight's agenda is uh, to approve meeting minutes. So let's move on to that, if I can find them, I will share my screen for you all. There we go. All right. I'm not even gonna ask, I'm just gonna do it this time. <laughs> so I do right, apologize, so talking... the, the minutes are a little bit longer than usual. Uh, so just be forewarned. <laughs> we did, we had a lot to cover. Um, yeah. Okay, so we, we started this meeting off with um, William Ravius, Ravis uh, Realty replacing signs um, and the primary, the recommendation centered on the monument sign in front of the building. And it seemed that a, a big concern was having the detail. So they want, you guys wanted the two post style as yep. opposed to the ugly monolithic rectangle at the bottom. And there's two details that were um, going to be lowered by six inches on those two posts. Yep. And I think those are the recommendations we gave. Um, and they did submit the updated renderings to us after the meeting. And um, the signs do conform with what was recommended. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So does that feel do do you do you, are your words captured? That's the important thing here. Let me know when to scroll. And then we went to uh, Uptown Tap and Grill. Um, can you just change the word inversing to inverting? Just an S. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Yeah.
Otherwise, looked good to me. Mm -hmm. I know we had um, 10 one tea house, 110, 10 one, um, where the comments were really about making sure that that larger sign was matching the width of the window and centered above the window because it wasn't the case in the rendering. And he also had ordered the sign too before the meeting. So I think the other idea was if he couldn't get the exact size, center. exactly, just to center it when he places yeah. it on there. Yeah. Right. Looks good. Yeah. And then we talked about um, Taqueria del Pueblo, and these signs had already been installed. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but we had a couple of recommendations. It seems that the QR code was the part that the board yeah. focused the most on because yeah. everybody seemed content with the, the decal they already had with the cactus and stuff like that. And I thought the suggestions for the QR code made sense and I did incorporate that into the recommendations. Yep. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then we, the, the, we didn't talk about the North Common that was bumped to tonight. We mm -hmm. talked about the meeting minutes, um, and then we began a discussion of the uh, design review criteria, and that's where this sort of wraps up. There we go. So if there's a motion to approve with changes or anybody has recommendations, well, I guess I'll ask for recommendations for changes first. Besides Lindsay's typo. Nothing. Um, all right. So, motion to approve. I move twenty six minutes. I move that we approve the. Uh, what date is that? Uh, February twenty sixth, twenty twenty four. Twenty sixth, two thousand twenty four minutes. With, with change. Correction. Okay. A second. I, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So moved. Thank you. Okay, so then the last bit then is to return to the discussion of the design review standards. Uh, Rob was kind enough to do the heavy initial lifting here in comparing the uh, current minutes and then making a proposal that helps to consolidate a little bit. Um, and I'm, I think this conversation will go well, <laughs> if we could just kind of, again, think of this, we're not going to approve anything tonight, but we want to think of it as a beginning dialogue. Um, and I of course want to make sure that we hear Catherine's, of course, you're going to be tuning in as a citizen for, cause you're going to miss us. I'm sure, but um, <laughs> I want to make sure that we hear Catherine's feedback tonight as well, and just see if um, you know, we're on this on the right path, right? As Rob has proposed, shared with us a draft of some proposed changes, um, if we're on the right path or not. And I think tonight we can kind of get the flavor, um, get the board's initial feedback on that, and then see where the conversation goes. So Erica, do you want me to give some quick background on, on my I, reasoning for, okay. Yeah, that would be so my let, exact next step and screen share <laughs> as you see fit, Rob. Sure, let <laughs> me uh, just do that real quick. All right, I know it's getting late and I'll be as brief as possible, but um, oh, so click that up. All right, so this is my proposed changes to the design review standards found in the zoning bylaw section 3.2041. 
And basically, I looked at a lot of what was previously there. So as you can see on the left here, this is the current standards. And a lot of what's mentioned here is stuff that is pretty redundant, as we identified historically. So what I did is I, I took a lot of what already exists here and just tried combining it and condensing it in a way that seemed appropriate, especially to um, items that relate to each other. For example, height and proportions. It seems to focus on the same parts of a structure and building than, say, scale would. Because when you look at scale versus height and proportions, a lot of the time scale might go above and beyond just the building. It might look at other uh, features in the area, like the scale of the building compared to the rest of the site, etc. And then shape, landscape, and then you have this larger category, architectural and site details. And I felt that it was important to add different um, sub bullet points here. So this you know, it wouldn't be just the building, it would also be like any other features that you'd see on the site. So lighting, any sort of pedestrian furniture or walkways, vehicle corridors, gathering spaces. So just, it kind of goes beyond just the architecture. It also includes any sort of, I guess what you'd see as landscape features or um, site features. And I included color textures, materiality, because that was brought up in the past as an area to focus on too. But I also included this category called aesthetic at the ends. And I thought that could be something that could be worth considering for any sort of like historic building or structure as opposed to a new building. And that could be like an optional category that the board could consider in any sort of review uh, of an existing building at least. And then obviously signs is left untouched at the end because this one in its current form kind of makes a lot of sense. And I don't see any reason to alter it. And I did kind of make this right here in terms of material choice, size, color, mm -hmm. method of illumination as a sub point of this. So this is this is kind of what I'm proposing as a good jumping off point. And hopefully this can lead to to further discussion down the road. And Erica, I know the other part of what you want to discuss also involves the Dotson and Flinker um, project. I do have Chris here who can talk a lot about that because she's worked more closely with them um, than I have. So um, just an, as an option after this, if you want to move on to that, we definitely could. Oh, you actually muted. <laughs> um, no, I think that's a really important point. So thank you first for doing the work that you did and presenting it to us uh, for conversation tonight. And I think that the what it might actually be great to hear from Chris before we start talking, just because the intersection of this and what Dodson and Flinker are going to be developing, um, it, it might be helpful to know, you know where those points of intersection are, um, if they're going to be rewriting this language um, anyways, <laughs> you know, like how do we make sure that our, uh, our priorities are heard in the process? Um, if they're going to be parallel documents, they should have similar uh, intentions and scope. Mm -hmm. So do you want me to uh, yeah. speak? So um, we just, we're just starting the design guidelines project. Um, it has dual source of funding. So um, we're actually working on two separate things. One is the design of um, the private properties in the downtown and giving guidelines to the private developers who are developing those properties. And then the other part of it is the streetscape design. So, you know, that is everything in the public realm, all the sidewalks and the roadways and the lighting and the, you know, places where people would gather in the public realm. Um, <clears throat> we're, uh, as I said, just beginning this project, um, we're beginning it with stakeholder meetings, and I think those are going to be scheduled for next week. And some of you, I think, are going to be invited, if not all of you. I don't know. Um, I, certainly, Erica is going to be invited and Karen. And if um, others are interested, you could send me an email and say that you're interested in being put on the list. The, the door is open wide. Um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously we don't want, you know, a hundred people, but we certainly want all the people who are interested in participating. Um, and the idea for those stakeholder meetings is to find out from um, citizens, residents of Amherst, um, what they think about <clears throat> the public realm and the private realm in the downtown area and how it could be improved and shaped. Um, Dodson and Flinker is going to be doing graphics um, similar to 
what they did for Northampton in the Florence area. They did a, 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 re, a, a set of design guidelines for Florence, mm -hmm. and I think they did that for the downtown. So if you look at um, <clears throat> Northampton's zoning bylaw, you can see some of those images. They also rewrote a lot of the zoning bylaw for Northampton and for Florence. Um, you know, they may not end up doing exactly the same thing for us, but that gives you a, a sort of an idea of what they might do for us. Um, and it's all going to evolve out of what the town wants to do. I And I think you have a copy of their proposal that was included in your packet. Yeah. Um, this project is a long project. It's gonna take about 18 months to complete. So there's a lot of time for public input. There's a lot of time for input from boards and committees. Um, and it's going to be, you know, kind of slowly moving along, but I hope that you will all uh, participate and, um, you know, actively participate in it. I think that's all I have to say right now. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. All right, I will um, move on to like hearing from everybody who'd like to, to weigh in and Lindsay's hand is up. Thank you. To kick us off. Um, I would love to be involved, Chris, if that's an option. Um, it's exciting. I um, I have two little ones that are waiting for me in the bathtub to wash their hair. <laughs> so I have to sign off, but I, I think this looks great and I really appreciate you doing this, Rob. It's it's a really great step forward. I would like to I would like to just add one comment and then if it's okay, I can jump off. Um, the shape, I think, could include language, which is a word that we use a lot um, architecturally just or or vernacular, like, something that references something that's more about um, the kind of the, the the quality and character of the building um, beyond kind of certain geometric components. And so if we could if we could discuss how that might in, be introduced into this outline, I feel like it might fit best in the number three shape category, but it also might fit elsewhere. So I'm, I'm just adding that to the mix. Mm -hmm. um, I will definitely look through this a little in a little more detail when I'm not being pulled away. Okay. Um, I guess if you gave me like a one word, or not one word, but like a phrase or like, I guess like some sort of term of what that is, Lindsay, that'd be really helpful because like, I'm not, I, I don't fully understand. So I'm not an architect. I don't fully know what you're, what you're digging at, but yeah. I, I kind of do at the same time. I just don't know. Well, I can't I put my finger on it. I would say the language could be like um, local vernacular or just vernacular mm -hmm. um, probably summarizes it, but Erica can can elaborate. Um, is it okay with you guys if I sign off? Early? Yeah, because we, we won't, you'll, you'll miss out on the rest of the conversation, but we won't be making any decisions tonight. So um, I apologize. Appreciate like that as you... long as I can hold them. <laughs> right. Thank you. Lizzie. Bye. See you, Lizzie. Hi, Lindsay. Yeah. So vernacular, um, and I guess Erica, as an yeah, architect, I, um, what do you think? Could you be? Could you describe it a little bit more, just so I can? Sure. Understand? I mean, I think it comes down. There's a little bit another. Um, it intersects. It intersects with um, building use and typology, right? So the vernacular of New England residential. Uh, buildings is they tend to have pitched roofs. They tend to be, you know, a, a, in, a, in a, a certain scale and have a, a relationship of, of, of windows to um, solid surfaces, right? That we come to, we come to recognize, right? So that's, that's what vernacular is. It's the mm -hmm. style it's, but it's also, you know, it's, it's regional, right? And so, yeah. um, it, it's it's kind of leaning into that word compatible, right? Um, elements should be compatible with the architectural style and character of mm -hmm. a building site and that of its surroundings. So it's it's so it's providing one more thing for us to lean on with regards to compatibility. So I guess translating that. So I know what vernacular is from like a literary standpoint and like language standpoint. Mm -hmm. So like, for example. In medieval Europe, Latin was the language spoken by the clergy and the upper class, but the the um I guess you call them peasants or common folk would speak vernacular, 
and that developed into a lot of different languages you see today, like Italian, French, Spanish, et cetera. So that's, I kind of see the connection of how that could relate to style choices in terms of shape of a building, because yeah. that's commonly what you'd see in the area, in the region. Yeah. So is and that it, what, what you're getting at? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not about matching anything exactly. It's fitting mm -hmm. within that palette of things. And so language is a good, um, a good word to use as a corollary because it's complex, right? Yeah. There's a lot that impacts how we understand the uh, language um, when it's spoken and a lot of different ways that those different individual letters and words can come together to make phrases and that and therefore meaning, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, it is interesting. I, I think that we aren't all architects on this on this board. And so we have to be mindful of the language that we're using. And if if vernacular is a word that doesn't carry, you know, outside of the architects, um, then we should be mindful of that. But I think um, taking the word vernacular and maybe expanding upon it mm -hmm. and then including that as a description for shape would probably be the most helpful because yeah. I think that would capture what Lindsay was trying to get at with expanding just beyond like just shape of the building itself but we need to include the overall character of the of the local community yeah. local stylistic choices stuff like that yeah yeah okay that's a good note Karen and Catherine your thoughts on where we are at the moment is are we headed in the right direction Let's see here, give it. yeah I think we're I think we're long overdue to revamp these standards. Uh, I think we have to be careful that we don't do a lot of work that's going to sort of be pushed aside because we have this big consultant uh, issue coming up. And somewhere, and I'd have to, I'd have to study <laughs> more, I think there, from my perspective, and maybe what I know from people I talk to all the time about Amherst is, how do we capture and assure we have the essence of what the downtown, uh, the downtown look is, the flavor of Amherst, why people were en enchanted by coming into Amherst. Uh, I don't think we've done a good job of keeping that look I mean, you're talking about vernacular and windows, and if that language had been incorporated earlier, we wouldn't probably have some of the buildings we have now. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot to, to be put into this, and I really thank Rob for taking this on because it's really important, and I hope we're not too late before or Amherst loses its essence. I, I, don't, I don't know what the word is. I don't know whether it's vernacular, but the feel of Amherst when people come into town. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Right, right. And we're not limiting building height beyond what, like above and beyond what the building code, right? It's as if the... Well, it's not just height. It's... Yeah. It's every... Right. It's, it's all, yes, it's all those things. Um, and I want to point out that like we can influence Dodson and Flinker, right? We are part of the, the community of Amherst. And so hopefully it's not something that would just be disregarded. Rather, it would be what they look to um, to shape their own recommendations. And so they could incorporate what, what we generate. And I think that that may be the place, that may be the, the perspective to lean into here. Uh, Chris, I think, uh, sorry, go ahead. <clears throat> oh, I, I just wanted to say that I like the way Erica leads the board through the criteria that are in the bylaw. And I think as you work to, you know, reword these criteria, it would help to keep that in mind that, you know, kind of you, you need like a snapshot view of what is scale. And maybe that means putting a few bullet points below the word scale rather than having this long run on sentence here so mm -hmm. that you can quickly look at it and Erica can lead you through the conversation. So just, I guess, 
um, my advice would be to remember how you use this list of criteria, and then maybe that will tell you how you should um, organize it on the page. Thank you. That's good advice. Karen, do you have any thoughts to share? Um, I think, yeah, I don't know, don't have any. Um, I think I have to really study this in detail. I'm kind of new to all this. I like the way it's been leading. I'm so glad we're getting a little bit more specific because it helps newcomers like me. But um, Catherine's right. We we are in a unique position um, to really help this design team um, get more of a feel of what we would like not to be lost uh, while they are helping us develop because we do have to be developing so yeah i think i think i really have to take this page and study it in detail i'm kind of fading i'm actually not even in amherst i'm i'm in bermuda on vacation <laughs> sort of having a wonderful time thank you we'll get you we'll get you back to that shortly um okay so I, the one thing that i i um i want to pitch kind of as a as we're doing our homework um, is to be something that I've found challenging with going through the design standards in the past has been a the redundancy and but maybe the reason that I feel that there's a great deal of redundancy is that we're often merging the building massing and its site mm -hmm. and the building facade and its internal design features under one category like proportions. And I feel that it would be helpful to separate the terms in similar, uh, with, with that in mind so that we might consider a building's height and its shape and its scale, right, of kind of primary massing vis-a-vis -vis the lot and its neighbors. And then there could be a separate category of things that are about the, the design of the building's facade. And I really actually want to appreciate you, Rob, for addressing the, the pedestrian, right, and thinking about the, the ground floor um, and hearing us there so there's there's a lot of decisions about like once we said okay the, the the scale of the building is appropriate for the neighborhood and the lot and so on now we can talk about the design of the facade and the features of the entry and exit points and things like that so i guess one question i have um erica you're making it seem like the shift should be focused on I guess the categories of massing that you were talking about, but then would you also recommend having an option for looking at the site as well as a, as a separate category? No, I think it's in there. I think it's in there, okay. Rob. It's like um, building height mm -hmm. addresses site, but it also within that we're talking about the relationship and the width of the doors and the windows, right? I feel like mm -hmm. there's building height and then there's the height yeah. of doors and windows that would go mm -hmm. in a different category. I see. And then scale um this that item number two is largely about the building relative to its landscape mm -hmm. um so maybe what if we um i guess kept the same general categories but maybe broke them up into little pieces would that make more sense i think it would because right now because right now it seems like scale is so broad that yeah. it could mean anything at like scale of the door knob to the door scale of the building to the actual site i mean exactly yeah and what happens i see what you we, mean we start talking about the building height and proportions and then all of a mm -hmm. sudden we're talking we've gone from building height to talking about the windows but then the windows come up again later right okay yeah and so we just i think want to have the maybe the conversation goes from the large scale to the detail mm -hmm. yeah and that's why number five I kind of thought it'd be a good idea to break it up like that because you could focus on each individual thing as you're going through site or architectural details and site details. Or at least opens us, opens all those things up. 
create exactly for them yeah and i want to think about the word aesthetic um yeah whether we want to talk about style here or another word that doesn't feel quite so broad so let's let's um agree to each spend some time with this um Catherine, you won't be at our next meeting as a design review board member, um, but we welcome your insights as a deeply experienced <laughs> participant <laughs> and, and member of the town. So you can share those by email if you have any additional things to add or et cetera. Yeah. Um, so we'll do our homework and, and keep this on the agenda for the next meeting and see if we can move it forward with some more specific recommendations. Awesome. All right. I'll stop sharing my screen. All right. Thanks. Yep. So with that, I think we could uh, adjourn. I so move that we adjourn. So moved. Catherine, we'll miss you. I'll hang around. <laughs> <laughs> we'll miss you. Come I back. I have to actually... I'll probably say more now that I'm not on the board than I did. This. <laughs> That's the way it goes. I'll be one of the pictures of moaners now calling in. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Um, Karen, happy vacation. Hope you enjoy Thank your time. You. <laughs> and Chris and Rob, thanks for your time tonight. Mm -hmm. Good night, Absolutely. everybody. Okay. Good night. Have a good night.